Good evening, everybody, and I want to welcome you to the second veterans art class here in Cannes. My name is Alexa Jett, and we could, me and Hannah could not be more happy that you are here with us. We want to give a big thank you to the sponsors who made this possible and who, just like we believe that veterans truly matter. Um, I want to thank Sumitomo Pharma, uh, formerly My Advanced Sciences, and Myriad Genetics. Thank you guys so much for providing the art supplies for our incredible veterans. We thank, thank you so, so, so much. Um, Hannah, what are we doing tonight? I know this is our little spiel that we do. What are we doing tonight? Aren't we going to have a great time? Because we already have great people here. And are you excited? Those are my three questions. I'm excited. Yeah, I love seeing all my people, new faces, um, old faces. Um, so again, thank you guys for being here. This is our second ever Veterans Appreciation Art Class. So again, thank you so much to our sponsors. Um, you guys are amazing. And we're going to go ahead and start our painting. So I'm going to go ahead and go over our supplies list, okay? Um, so if you will turn to our painting down here, um, we're going to want uh, water, napkins, and some sort of thing to hold your paints. If you have like a palette or like a paper plate, um, if, you, and if you don't have any of those things, wax paper works as well. Um, and if you don't have wax paper, you can also use like a, a plastic lid. Anything that is non-porous will work totally fine. Something to hold your paint. That's all. Um, as far as our canvas, concerned, we're gonna want to we're gonna want to use a nine by twelve. That's what I have here. Silly me, I forgot to uh, buy more nine by twelve canvases. So I'm gonna use an eleven by fourteen. So yours is just mine's just a little bit bigger. Um, but that's okay. You know, if you are if you are confident enough to use a larger canvas, then I do encourage you guys to do that. Take that big step. Um, but we will be using nine by twelve. Um, I also have my brushes here. So we're gonna want some kind of flat brush here um, and that's to do our background. So it's to, to, to put that background in as quickly as we can. Um, and this is specifically a three quarter inch flat brush. But if you have, I know that some of you guys got some, um, some different packages, just depending on what I could find for you specifically. Um, they should have had, they should have at least like some sort of big brush. Um, so something like this. We're also gonna want a few round brushes too. So my largest round brush is about a size eight, but if you have like a size six, that's fine too. Um, even if a size 10, a size larger, that's okay as well. But then we're also gonna wanna go smaller a little bit. I, I, I have here a size five, but if you have a size six or a size four, anything similar to that, you will do just fine with that. And those are my brushes. Um, well, here's an optional brush. I'm probably not going to use it, but if you guys want a teeny tiny one, I have here a size, I want to say it's like a size one or a size two, something like that. So totally optional though. As for colors, we're going to want a good amount of white paint. Um, we have all the snow up here and we've got all these colors here. So I have my white paint off to the side. I have some blue you guys should have gotten some sort of medium blue um, or even a dark blue in some cases. And we're going to want to use this color um, black. So we're going to make things much darker with the black. We have purple, not one of these. We have a teal, so some sort of teal color. This one's specifically Laguna. It's a little bit darker, but even if you got a little bit lighter, that's fine too. And then some sort of light green. So this one's super bright. Whatever is is bright enough for you, that's what you want. I think I got it all. Um, yeah, I went over water. Um, do you guys have any questions? We're not going to draw anything. So no need for pencils or anything like that. We're just going to dive straight into it. So do you guys have questions before we begin? All right. Yes, let's do it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start to pour out my colors now. Let me set this aside. This and Hannah, I just want to mention really quick, um, people can ask questions at any time, either in the chat, or you can shout them out too. We uh, are so happy to help you. 
Yes. Yeah. Excellent reminder. Um, I tend to go fast sometimes. So a reminder that I'm going too fast helps. <laughs> it helps. It goes a long way. So if you'll see down here, I have my little palette. Go ahead and take your colors out. So I put probably enough of this green here. Just pour a little bit out. We are going to want a good amount of black paint, um, a lot of blue. So I would definitely do a lot of blue because we have um, all that background, that background is supposed to be blue. And that is what we're going to be starting with. So I'm actually going to be putting my blue and my black right next to each other. Got a good amount there. Um, teal as well. It's going to be one of the beginning colors too. And of course, I've got my purple here. I've got a little bit of um, what is it, the green right there. And of course, um, it does help to shake the colors around, especially if they've been sitting around collecting dust for a while. It happens. We give them a good shake. I am going to pour this out. I always need to like buy a lot of white paint because I tend to do a lot of mixing myself. Now, again, my canvas is a little bit bigger than what you guys have, unless you opted to use a, a larger canvas. Um, but you guys should be, if you're doing it the standard way, use a nine by 12. So I'm gonna set this aside right there. And I'm gonna be using my blue brush, or I'm sorry, my big brush for the blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and point out exactly what we're seeing here. It's a lot of blue in the background, and that's actually exactly where, where we're going to be starting. We're going to actually jump to the bottom first, and we're going to draw this little lake area here first. Well, I say draw, paint. We're going to paint this little lake area first with our blue, and then we're going to skip a space because we have this, this uh, the snow right here. We've got this right here. So we're just going to skip a space, and then we're going to jump up and do the rest of it first. Um, at some point, we'll add some black up here. We'll also add a little bit of black down here, too. Um, the way I like to teach painting, like my, my painting style, is I like to dip my brush into different things without, um, without rinsing it. Um, it's very painterly. It gives you a more, um, a more abstracted feel. And so that's just kind of my style. So I hope you guys like it. Um, let's begin. Like I said earlier, we're going to have this little space right here. It's just going to be a band in the middle. And it really doesn't matter how far you put it. Um, I would say just give your best guess for, for how low to put it. I'm going to bring this up so you guys can see it a little better. There we go. Hopefully that's okay. I'm probably going to end up using more blue than this. Oops, let's see. And again, we're going to start at the bottom here. And let's start out by grabbing some of our blue. No need to, to dip your brush in the water. But if you did, that's totally fine. Don't really have to, though. So I have a lot on my brush. OK, this is like, it's pretty lumpy, right? I'm going to start off by drawing this little curve that you see right here. I'm going to use the flat side. We'll brush it down. That flat side is going to allow me to go a little further, a little faster, and then start to paint it. Paint all of this area, because this is our lake. We want to paint this whole thing blue. Now, I recommend moving your brush strokes from side to side. You guys see that? And of course, if you're if you're putting the paint on there for the first time, it's absolutely OK to move your brush up and down. But eventually, go ahead and move sideways or at least move along with this line. Y'all have questions so far? Cool. Cool. You guys are going to do awesome. I am going to grab more paint. Are you going all the way to the bottom of your canvas? Yes, I am indeed. Um, and if you happen to have any sides, then I would I would paint the sides there. That's something that I like to do personally, but it's just a personal preference. You don't have to. 
if you don't want to bother with it. Just a personal preference right there. Um, now let me point you guys back to this one, the original picture. Notice how um, it's pretty lumpy right here. Like there's, there's a lot of snow piled on either side. Um, just for now, I'm not gonna draw this little lump out. I'm just gonna make a band. Just gonna make like make it going straight across. And I'm doing that for a reason. Show you that reason in a minute. So I uh, again using that flat side. I've got a good amount of space between here. It's it's kind of hard to uh, to to gauge exactly how much space that is, but maybe like three fingers, I don't know, four inches maybe, make a band all the way across like that. And again, even though it is lumpy, we will create that shape later. Everyone's concentrating. Quiet time. Okay. Now, this part's really fun because we get to paint all the way up. All of my brush strokes are going to be back and forth, back and forth, horizontal. I'm going to go from edge to edge. Anytime I refill, I'm going to grab a lot of paint. And this is what I mean when I said we're going to be using a lot of this blue paint. Back and forth. Hannah. Mm hmm Is there any reason, I know I've asked this before, you can't just pour out some paint on there and then smear it around? You can, actually. <laughs> I forget that sometimes. All right, cool. <laughs> That's the fun way. <laughs> you can totally do that. I'm going to show you guys if you want to. Just kind of squirt a little bit there. It might be a little bit hard to gauge exactly how much paint if you're doing it this way. But it's just more fun to do it that way. Just go back and forth. Yeah, Brandy, thank you for reminding me that. Because I do do that sometimes. I just don't always do that. Um, no matter what, though, no matter which method you're doing, you do want to smooth it out as best as you can. So I'm constantly going over a lot of my brush strokes so that I can continue spreading these brush strokes back and forth, edge to edge. Got a little paint chip in my on my brush. There you go. I need to wipe that away. This is where if you want to protect your surface, it's nice to have like a wax paper or something underneath it. Loose paper. Now I'm going to take this blue all the way to the top. Now this blue, it is going to get much darker. And for this part, I would say um, we do, we still want this area to be a little bit wet um, whenever we go over it with the black paint. So that's why I'm going, I'm going fast on this part. And that's specifically because we want the black and the blue to mix. We want it to, uh, to blend on the canvas. I'll show you that in a moment though. Any other questions? Trying to catch up. Oh yeah, yeah, you're good. I just said I paint fast. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. I love that a lot of you guys are having your own little uh, painting parties right there, like with different people. I love it. I love seeing all that. Anna, you went up down the sides of your canvas for this whole part, right? Um, I am. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, so you just kind of swipe a little bit down this way. Yeah, thank you for the reminder. I just think it looks nicer this way. Now notice how I'm like, my fingerprints are getting on like the white area. I'm getting a little blue right there. That's totally okay. We're gonna have so much white paint and uh, some of this blue is going to mix in with the white paint when we put it down there. 
So it's totally okay. Okay, so in a moment here, I'll show you guys how to darken up your blue. And then that in turn is going to darken our sky. Probably want to pour a little bit more for me because the majority, if not, yeah, I'd say just the majority of the sky is going to become darker. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So my blue is significantly darker than yours. So should I like use a light, like a white cut towards the bottom? Um, when you say significantly, does does it look more like a navy blue? Like maybe down yeah. here or maybe right here? Yeah. Then you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you're okay. good. You don't have to do anything to it. Okay. Yeah, you don't Thank have you. to lighten it or anything. Yeah, I think for some people I threw in like an admiral blue or like a navy blue or some sort. That's actually what we want. I just couldn't find it for everybody. So also Hannah has a fantastic ring light. So she is getting excellent lighting. As that's true. Colors might look just a little bit different. That's very true because I look at my my screen and it looks a lot brighter than what it actually is. So yeah, that's really good observation but feel free to ask just to check too but yeah just yeah. keep in mind hers is going to probably be a little bit lighter because she's being a little yeah bit yeah I, yeah yeah a little extra sometimes so i have my blue and i'm going to just pre-mix a little bit of this black into some of my blue i've got a little pile of blue right here on the side just scooping it right there and then we're also going to take a little bit of black paint. And this is where we get to mix some of it to make a dark uh, navy blue. Now yours, again, may look a little bit different, but as long as it looks like a navy blue to you, you're on the right track. And if this isn't totally dry, which it shouldn't be totally dry, by the way, shouldn't be. Um, it's going to mix a little bit in it and possibly make it a little bit uh, lighter, just depending on you. So I'll give you guys a moment to pre-mix a little bit of that. I'll probably have to make a bit more. I never make enough paint. I try to. Like, I actively try to make a lot of paint, but it doesn't always work out. I'm trying to keep it all within the same spot too. Like it's really easy to just accidentally mix it within this entire area. So you don't wanna, don't wanna do that. When you are ready, I'm gonna show you this one. Um, it's, it's pretty dark up here at the top. So I'm just gonna keep swiping it from the top this time all the way sideways, still sideways, going down, um, probably just until this this uh, color disappears. Kind of play it by ear. Only on we'll one start side? At, uh, we'll start at the very top, yes. So we're going to swipe it back and forth. Side to side. Probably grab some more. Do you want it to be much lower than that? And some of you guys, including myself, actually, we may need to grab some blue and add the blue on top of it in order to blend it. Can you see how there's kind of a harsh line right there? Probably have to add some blue to, to blend it. So I'll show you guys that technique in a minute. So I am trying to just make sure I can smooth everything out. Don't have any lumps and bumps. I think I am good. I think I am. I just have a little bit of this navy blue to add, and then then that's it for me. Oh, jeez, all the way down. We went, yeah, we went pretty far down, yeah. And if you don't happen, if you don't reach all the way down, that's okay. Um, in fact, and I do want to keep a small amount of space here. Yours may vary, but um, I do want to keep a small amount of space here because it's it's a nice gradient. We're going for a gradient. Ooh, do you guys see the uh, white paint I spilled in my picture? 
Now, here's a little teaching moment for you guys. Um, sometimes baby wipes, they help to wipe paint off. I don't know if you guys knew that. Don't want to press down hard because otherwise I would take the actual paint off. But they they work magic. Anyway. So in order to blend out this harsh line right here, I'm gonna want to add some purple onto my brush. And I'm not gonna want to rinse it off. I still want that that navy blue to be inside my brush just a little bit. But I'm going to add some of that regular blue straight from the bottle to my brush. I've got it right at the end there. And right on this line where the navy meets the regular blue, I'm going to start to go over that and go yeah. over my brush strokes from end to end. Yes. You mentioned purple. Did I miss that? Or um, no, we you had just. Purple. Okay, just blue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just blue. Just got blue and black. Now, this is just with one scoop of blue, but for me, I'll probably want to add a little bit more blue. And that may be you just sort of look at your own painting. And, and if you see a harsh line still, then go ahead and add more blue. Yeah, yeah excuse me, miss. Yeah. When do we add the purple? Uh, there is no purple. Did I say purple? Yeah, you said purple. You did, you did oh, say did? purple. You definitely did. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, no purple. That's my that's my fault. No purple. Just the blue and the black. That's all we're doing is blue and black. And actually, the purple is not going to come uh, till later whenever we do the snow. And then we'll put some in the sky in the Aurora Borealis whenever we do the, uh, the northern lights. Hannah, just, just to clarify snow, real quick, light. because yes. you said that you're going to mix the purple into the blue. Did you mean that you mix a little bit of black into the blue? Yeah, yeah, black. Okay, okay. So can you just show that one more time? Yeah. Did I see? I'm sorry, guys. Let's do this again. If you added purple, then actually that's okay, because that's actually going to look really nice. I didn't do that myself, but I kind of wish I did. Anyway. Um, what I meant to say was a big old scoop of blue paint and then a small amount of black paint. But again, if you added that purple, that's okay too. But that black paint is really going to push it and make it really dark. Yeah, the black paint is going to make it real dark. And even if you have some purple in there, that's okay. Just add more blue, balance it out with more blue and a little bit of black. As long as it's a dark color, you're good. So you're That's putting the cool. darkest color at the top? Mm hmm okay. Yeah, I started up here. Yep. And then I slowly made my way all the way down. Not all the way down, just a good portion of the way down. Hannah, Thank this you is so a much great... for pointing that out. Yeah, Hannah, this is a great time to mention yeah. that actually everyone at ANCAN is a peer. Um, I'm a cancer survivor. And Hannah has MS, and that was just a cock fog moment. This is real life. Yes, it was. Thank you, Alexa. Yeah, sometimes my brain is just, you know, all over the place. Because that's and everybody for with you. a chronic condition, either chemo brain, can totally relate. But yep, here at Ankin, we are all peers. Yep. Yeah, in um, fact, I, um, yeah, I, I met Alexa through another art class um, be that we were doing virtually for people who have um, illnesses too. So I'm glad you understand. Do y'all have any more questions? Is there anything else I need to clarify? Cool. Concentration mode. All right. Now, once you're finished um, with the navy, once you have blended it all out, um, you can actually, we're actually gonna jump over here to the bottom, and then we'll add some of that navy down here to the bottom. So it's a good thing I made a little bit more. So it's that navy, so it's the blue mixed with the black. 
So if you're ready, I can show you all how to do that. All right, now it is the same technique. Um, the only difference is that we're going to just sort of curve it a little bit. We're gonna move along this area down here. Because if you can see on the original, got I've got it moving along the edge of the water. So that's the only difference. And it does look a little bit darker than the navy. Um, and that's just because later on, we're gonna add a little bit of black to it. But don't worry about the, the about making it pure black right now. We just want it to be navy. So I have the navy color on my brush. I'm gonna go down here. Using the flat side, I'm gonna follow along the edge, curving it. I know it's kind of hard to see that. Now that same technique where we added a little extra blue onto our brush, I'm gonna go ahead and do that technique. Now I have to pour some of it out. So again, that technique was to um, not rinse your brush. I still have a little bit of that navy just kind of worked up in there. And then I'm gonna grab the blue, good amount of it. And then I'm gonna go right on top of that line here. I'm gonna go over it again and again and again. And that's how we blend it. Now keep in mind this portion right here, and honestly, even back here, um, it's going to be pushed back into the background. So um, don't worry about making this area perfect. Um, it's going to become even more painterly uh, in a few minutes, actually. We're actually going to add some more to this area. So if it's not totally blended, if it's not like a really nice gradient, that's okay. You don't have to make it perfect because we're going to add more brush strokes to it. We're going to mess it all up. Um, but actually... When you're finished down here, you can rinse your brush. You can rinse your, your big brush. Feels nice though, feels nice to rinse it. Nice and clean. Now, if you, um, if you like listening to music while you're doing art, um, you can do that. It's just a little bit of light music on in the background. Sometimes when I'm teaching, I have a little bit of jazz or something playing in the background. Feel free to do that. Thought I'd throw that out there. We will be using our um, our our largest of the round brushes, so it's a size eight. So I've got my size eight right here. We'll be jumping over to that one. And we will be putting in um, some of the water texture down here. So for here, I have um, I have a lot of the, the teal. I have a little bit of blue. And then, of course, the black paint as well. Teal, blue, black. I'm trying to catch up. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Keep going. Keep in mind that um, I do want you guys to be able to uh, spend more time on the Aurora Borealis and the trees and all that good stuff. So um, this this stuff that we're working on right here is going to be pushed to the background. So we're not going to be a can whole you, lot of it. Can you repeat the brush and the colors you just told us? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, the brush is going to be the size eight. So it's the bigger of the round brushes. Okay. In there, and then my colors are going to be my teal, my blue, and my black. Hey, Hannah. Yes. Is, is aquamarine the same thing as teal? Yeah, yeah, same, same thing, or similar. I would say similar. It's funny because I just recently, like the other day, looked up the difference between teal and turquoise because I had no idea. I use these colors interchangeably. And I remember, uh, I don't know if Karen is here, but Karen told me that there was a difference and I had no idea. 
Um, but yeah, teal is apparently the darker of the two. You just, yeah. Andrew, that, that reminded me of <laughs> what I looked up the other day. <laughs> All that to say that now I know the difference between the two colors. I feel like a failure as a woman because I don't know my colors. No, don't know. I don't know a lot of like the more more complicated colors. I remember right. when I was in college, I I I had barely learned what the the name of, of chartreuse is, like what chartreuse is. Oh, I couldn't tell you. That's honestly that's probably the, the fanciest one I know. Right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump to the water, and we really get to have fun now because the water is just the beginning of our texture. Um, as you can see, there's lots of texture in the water, lots of texture in the snow, and of course, obviously, the trees, of course, lots of texture, too. Um, texture, it also means um, your brush strokes. You can see your brush strokes very well, and um, I do encourage you guys to just to embrace those brush strokes a lot of times we get so caught up in just trying to blend perfectly and it's it's natural like I, I think it, it takes a lot to step away from that um, and so that's why I'm I'm reminding you ahead of time it's really nice if you're able to um, it was I would say it's really an accomplishment if you're able to make a brush stroke and then move on make a brush stroke, move on, do that again and again and again. And that same um, idea is gonna be applied here once we actually do the snow too. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin by, um, we're gonna, you're gonna do a lot of double dipping actually. This is one of my favorite techniques, um, double dip. I'm actually gonna grab my blue first, even though you see teal in there, we're gonna grab blue using that round brush this time. Round brush number eight or similar. Even if you grab like a six, that's fine too. This is a small area. So I'm gonna work that blue in here. And I'm actually gonna double dip into my teal. Hello, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you have a question? Okay, that's all right. Now, <laughs> jump down here. Um, I want to start out by making my watercolor. So I'm gonna swipe it. I tend to, to be more comfortable swiping to the right. So that's what I'm gonna do. These are all smaller brush strokes, horizontal brush strokes. They're short, they're quick. Anytime I refill, I'm gonna refill with my blue plus the teal. So double dipping, getting some blue, getting some teal on top. And I'm gonna try to just swipe and go. Swipe and go a bunch of these. I encourage you guys to overlap some of these brush strokes. Swipe and go, swipe and go. And I'm even going to cross over onto this really dark area, this navy area. I'm gonna cross over on top of that too. Just double dipped teal and blue. The idea is that we're giving the impression of uh, water ripples. Giving the impression of like the, the texture of the water. Um, you know how when, when you look at it from a distance, it looks like it's um, going from side to side. All of our brush strokes are gonna be a little bit different from one another's. I encourage you guys to embrace that. These brush strokes are going to overlap. I'm I'm even getting pretty close to my to the water's edge right there. If if after doing a bunch of brush strokes, you feel like it might actually be easier for you to um, go a size down in in your brush size, then I encourage you guys to do that too. Just sort of pay attention to the way you are uh, handling the brush because it's totally fine to jump to a uh, one that would suit you a little bit better. So sometimes smaller brushes might suit other people a little bit better. These brush strokes are gonna overlap. In a little bit, we'll add some black to the mix. But for now, we've just got the two colors, the blue and the teal. 
I'm even going to try to make some of these brushes kind of go off the edge there to make it seem like the like the picture continues. Just kind of swipe them to the edge there. Some of them are just naturally going to be a little bit thinner, some a little thicker, some a little longer. You get the idea. I love just sort of getting lost in the texture and the rhythm of it all. Now this idea of putting your brush stroke down and leaving it alone and letting it be a brush stroke, keep that in mind whenever we do that, whenever we do our, um, our snow over here. And you'll probably see a good portion of your blue and your navy underneath it. But feel free to just, if you're covering up some of some of your, your teal, I'm sorry, if you're covering up some of your navy and your, your base coat, that's okay too. We have, we're going to have a lot of different marks here. Right over all of this area. Now I'm about to throw in our third color, black paint now. I am going to go ahead and start off by, again, not rinsing our brush. I'm not going to rinse it. Um, I'm going to grab some blue. And instead of going lighter to the teal, I'm actually going to jump over here to my black paint and double dip with a little bit of black paint. And then it's the same idea, except this time I'm going to try to aim for maybe some of the spaces in between, like that. Aim for some of the spaces in between. Maybe even take it right up to the water's edge right there. And even though I, I'm saying to aim for the spaces in between, you still want to overlap them a little bit. And it will naturally happen. You will naturally overlap some of this area. Hey, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I had to step away right as you were starting the bottom with the colors. Are you just using black, blue, and is that teal? Yeah, or, actually. Yeah. Oh, so you did do bottom, the teal. Okay. Yeah, it's it's double dipping. So I first start with blue. No matter what, no matter what you're doing, start off with blue. And then we first added a double dip of a teal. Okay, so do a cool. bunch of that. Yeah, do a bunch of that. And then you can go in and do double dip blue and then black. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, let's see, I need more black paint. And I do want to add a good amount of it coming like, like from the left side, just kind of sleeping to the right from the left side. I feel like there's there's like a dark spot over here. It's really dark over by the water's edge. So I'll start concentrating a lot of my, my black double dips in this area because it's very dark. And the nice thing about this technique is that you can always um, go over it again with your teal. Like maybe, let's just say maybe I feel like I, I covered up too much of my teal here. Well, you can always go back and double dip back into your teal and reapply it. So that's the nice thing about this kind of technique. A little bit of blending will naturally happen, but at least you'll be able to bring back some of those highlights that were lost whenever you put the, the black paint over here. And try to concentrate some more of them right up here at the water's edge. Maybe bring it down here just a little bit. I feel like I lost some of my teal over here on this left side. So I'll go in and I'll add a little more. I love the way, like the, the kind of blue that the teal and and blue create together when they when they mix. I just think it's such a pretty color.
there. I think I'm, I think I'm happy with mine. I think I'm good. Yeah, if you if you're happy with what you've got, you're happy with your brush strokes, everything like that, um, you can rinse your brush. Maybe I'll add a little more teal over here. I always say that I'm I'm done, and then I end up adding like <laughs> ten more things. Yeah, it happens all the time. Like like clockwork. <laughs> like I can't stop myself. Yeah, we're going for that that mixing look. Like a lot of these brush strokes are really overlapping and they're they're blending in with whatever isn't uh dry yet. And that's really nice. Okay. Officially done. I'm gonna rinse my brush. So if I've done the blue and teal, at what point do you then say, okay, now it's time to do black? <laughs> Like, yeah, do you, I've, like, filled it kind of up with lots of little teal slashes. Yeah, uh, I would say if you, if it needs to be darkened up, like, over here, that's when you'd say, okay, I can move on to black or maybe add more black. Because what I did was I added, um, this is actually where the next step after the teal is where you go into the blue first and then double dip black. And then you start adding it right there. But then also, you're also moving out here and sort of adding it in between as well. But mostly concentrating it closer to the water's edge, though. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, hope that made sense. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Beautiful. Um, so if you've taken multiple classes with me, you'll know that I like to ask uh, has anybody done anything creative in the last week? Anything at all? Some people like to show us their work, what they've done in the last week, but you don't have to. Don't feel like you have to. I just like to ask that question because I like seeing what you guys do. I like seeing your work. Ooh, Joe, I see you You put, putting something up. I did a glow in the dark. Um. Hey Alexa, can you spotlight Joe? Sorry, oh. I don't know that. Happened. Not the machine, Alexa. <laughs> she just went off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that. <laughs> Maybe Alexa stepped away for a minute. But Joe, I see it. I see your roses. I think they're beautiful. I saw them. Who who else said something? I heard a voice. I did. Let's see, where are you? There you are, Jane. What? Did you cook a whole turkey? That's a beautiful turkey. What? Oh, man, Eric. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, and then Sharon. I see you, Sharon. That is so pretty. That is glow gorgeous, Sharon. Yeah. How glowy is it? Um. Well, if I had on, if I had black lights. <laughs> It was, oh yeah yeah how cool um, i love it that's fun yeah it looks super fun they kind of do a, a black light painting sometimes that'll be fun <laughs> all right we'll come back to this okay so if you're dying to show what you've done the last week um we'll come back to you okay um i want to go ahead and uh work on our our snow now I'm thinking we'll work on our snow and then we'll go and we'll work on the background after that. Um, we of course want to completely rinse our brush. So again, we're gonna be using the size eight. So the larger of, of the round brushes. Now, in case you're wondering how in the world do you um, rinse your brushes? How do you clean them? Um, I like to just sort of swipe them on the bottom. I'm sort of swiping and bouncing up and down. And then I'll go to the side, tap it on the side. And if I see paint trickling down, then I know that it needs to, to be rinsed some more. I always do that. At this point, it's just dirty water trickling down. So I think I'm good. Um, but then as a, a, an extra precaution, I like to go to my napkin and wipe it on my napkin because that's the that's what's really going to tell me if it's still dirty or not and it's not so i'm good
So we're going to use this brush again. And while you guys are finishing up and rinsing your brush off, I want to show you how we're going to approach the, the snow. Now, we're going to use a lot of paint, okay? I know I said before to kind of like start to smooth out your, your lumps and bumps, um, but actually we kind of want a lot of paint on this one. Um, I'm going to start off by applying the white paint onto the, uh, the canvas. Um, and you're not going to be able to see it very well unless you like really look at it. Um, however, we want that nice soft bed of white paint before we add any kind of color to it because the colors that we're using are very dark. They're just so different. Um, so if we have that nice bed of white, then uh, it just means we have a lot of paint to work with. Um, so yeah, so I'm still going to apply it in the same di direction and the same way that you see here except it's just white paint, that's it. So make sure you have a lot of it. I have such a tiny workspace. Always having to move things around. Okay, so here's my white paint, I have a lot of it. Go ahead and really work that into the brush. And if you happen to have a little bit of blue paint or black paint or something, um, like tinting your your white paint, that is okay because we are going to tint it later ourselves with the purple and the blue. So that'll come later. Again, lots of this paint. And I'll go ahead and start by shaping it in the back. So I've got my two little lumps here and we can start by shaping it. I'm going to start just a little at a time Kind of building it up a little at a time. Add more paint as necessary as you run out. And I am definitely overlapping my, my sky, in case you couldn't tell. I'm overlapping the sky. You know how we made like a straight band across? But we're not, we're not going to keep that band. We're shaping it. There's a reason I'm starting in the back because whenever we do add color to it, um, we're gonna wanna start in the back. So I'm just sort of doing, doing this as, um, as it should be done. You know, like one of my snow mounds over here is bigger than the other, but honestly, whatever you wanna do is totally fine. I have a lot of paint on my brush. And if your snow mound accidentally gets a little bit bigger and bigger every time you add paint, that's okay too, because you have a lot of space to work with. I'm moving my brush strokes in a fluid way, going with the shape of these mounds. I'm constantly refilling my brush and constantly adding lots of white to the surface. Like if I were to tilt this, Hopefully you guys would be able to see like some of that texture there. It's a good amount of paint. Now I'm getting close to the water's edge down there. So I'm going to start just uh, flatten it out just as I get closer to the water's edge. And again, I'm probably moving a little bit fast, so I'll slow down. But once you do get to the water's edge, then just kind of move along the edge. And if you happen to overlap the water's edge, that's okay because we are gonna overlap it later. I am gonna try to be a little bit careful because I don't wanna, I don't wanna overlap too much of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I assume you are using, it looks like you're using the same brush. You just really washed it out and then moved to white, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, just, uh, and even if you don't like, like, like if you accidentally have a little bit of extra paint in there, that's okay. It's just going to tint it a little bit. So I got lots of white there. So you're making sure you can't see any of the blue behind it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's how much white I'm putting on it. Like, I, I'm actually accidentally wiping some away by 
like the more I go over it, it kind of takes some of the paint away. Um, but that's okay, even if it does that, because I, I know it has a lot of paint on it. So my blue is definitely not dry. Yours was dry? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh. Mine was dry. But if you if you dragged some of your blue in there, then you're actually ahead of the game. Because I mm. we're gonna put some blue in the back back here and uh, and over here too. So your head. Yeah, you guys are doing you guys are doing great no matter what. I know it. Oh yeah, so uh, anybody else want to show like whatever they've done that's creative in the last week? Or has anybody done anything fun? I say in the last week, but you know, last month maybe? Anna, did I show this group my Mount Fuji one? Uh, no, you did not. Yeah, if you want to show off that, we'd love that. Okay. Yeah, Marcy, Marcy's been painting a lot. She's she's a regular on my uh, my uh, Monday night classes. I don't know. Can you see? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Mount Fuji. Wow. I know. Awesome. Isn't it cool? It's and big then, too. It's three feet, three and a half feet by two and a half feet. Wow. Man. You were I working. Cherry blossoms. Yeah, there's yeah, your cherry blossoms. So pretty. Oh, that's all. Yeah, the, they're really good. I Thank love you. painting cherry blossoms and I'm not good at it at all. I'm impressed. <laughs> and I have this cat that I did. Oh yeah. Anna Marie. Can you see it? Yeah. I can see it. There we go. Oh, you painted oh, that's that? Beautiful. What? Yeah, in watercolor. Wow. Oh wow. Wow, that's really cool. That's really yeah. pretty. That looks like my cat. cat. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Wow. Was it a commission? Did you do it for somebody? Yeah, for your yeah cat? I did it for, for a friend. Um, her, she's, that's not her cat, but it's, uh, it's a gift that she's going to give someone. Oh, very cool, man. Oh, Eric, I see you're holding up. Oh, that's cool. Eric, you are, you're on a boat. Did you go fishing? Yeah, I guess you went fishing. Oh, that's cool. That's so pretty. Yeah. Those sailboats back there. I, if I'm really being honest, I'm terrified of the water. Yes, he went <laughs> but it's he beautiful. Went sailing. He went sailing. Oh, nice. And then Marsha, did you want to show something? yeah can you hear me yes i'm working on a solar system it's about four foot Ooh. i think it's oh what is it 60 actually no it's 60 by 30 oh so, my goodness so kinda, here, I found you. oh wow wow so, uh, it's a big one. Oh, oh, that God. is beautiful that the tree texture. is gorgeous. oh my gosh so in the middle, I've got a cross, but it's made out of vines, so it's right over wow. Earth. But oh I've got some God. other things I want to add to it. I, just, I like a lot of texture, so I've got a way on this thing to paint and to like dry in between. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that's, the texture. that's creative. Yeah, really creative. Thanks everyone yeah, for thanks. showing. Did I anybody else want to show, show anything oh. before we move on? This is we can't come back to it. I have a yeah. little sculpture piece that I made at a community art class, um, like last week. I have a, hang on, where is my picture? <laughs> I, I'm looking for you. <laughs> yes, I'm looking. Trying to find myself. <laughs> I can't find myself, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, here you are, here you are. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, a piece in clay where we used little um the like alphabet pasta like the huh. dry pieces of noodle pasta to put letters huh. or words into the clay and then when you fire it they burn off and leave the color of the clay behind 
Um, cool. and so I wrote, let it go, let it rain, live it up or something. That, like that. Such and an interesting cloud. technique. Wow. That's really cool. <laughs> So yeah, I had yeah, a lot so of fun the, working with the little pasta things. Like it was, it was very tedious, but that kind of a yeah. thing as well. But coming up with what to make was great job. Process too. Thank you. Yeah, and I love that technique. Just the <laughs> fact that it, uh, it disappears. Like it just burns up. I, I love ceramics. Very cool. Thank you all so much yeah, for sharing. For I sure. love this. Yeah, uh, yeah. and we can always come back to this question. So. Can I ask a question? Um, yeah, yeah, Brandy. So I'm trying to make my, I guess, mountains in the snow. Um, did you paint? Is it whole? Is your whole thing white all the way to yeah, the river? Mm -hmm. Just white. In fact, that's a great segue into the next step. Um, because this is. But you went all the way white. down to the water too. I did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See, do you see how much paint I'm using? It's a lot of paint. Okay. So we can move on. Great segue into the next section. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, by adding a little bit of blue. And honestly, there's everybody's is going to turn out a little bit different. Um, the only thing I want you guys to keep in mind uh, or to do actually is to start from the back and then move forward. Start from the back. So this is going to be our darkest area. So we're gonna add um, some blue, and then we'll throw in a little bit of purple in there. Both of those colors are gonna get really mixed up and it's, it'll look a little bit different, but we've got the movements down. We've got the um, the flowy movements down because we just did that with uh, whenever we were putting the white paint in there. So do you guys see this dip right here, right in the middle? It's darkest because um, I just feel it just felt right to make that darkest in terms of perspective. So that is actually where I'm going to start off. So I'm going to grab white paint. And again, we're going to do that double dipping technique. White paint here and then blue paint at the tip of my brush. Um, at the, honestly, that's probably plenty, just a little bit at a time because you can always add more, but it's a it's a little bit more tedious, a little bit harder to take away some of that dark, dark color. So I'm gonna start in the middle here, start with that dip, and I'm gonna start swinging it up. A lot of these brush strokes, um, they're meant to be messier. They're meant to be abstracted. So I encourage you guys to have fun with this. Um, I'm going to double dip again. I've grabbed more white paint, get some blue. I want it to be kind of dark down there. Move it upwards. I'm starting in the back specifically because I want um, these brush strokes up here to look like they're in the front. And I can only do that if I start in the back and move to the front little by little. And that's the only real technique here. It's just to grab lots of paint, start in the back, start swiping. And I'm not always gonna grab blue. In fact, I'm gonna start to grab a little bit of purple now. We're really gonna get all mixed up here. I am trying to move back and forth in that same swervy motion. And it's totally okay to pick up your brush here and there. You might have to. Um, because we have a lot of of brush strokes, and not all of them are are fluid. Like some of them, you can really tell that I picked up my brush and I went and I got some more paint. So they're not all elongated, smooth brush strokes. Um, mostly, I just want you guys to have fun with it. At any point, you can throw in a little bit of purple. So again, that double dipping idea, um, where I grab the white paint, dip into my purple. This is our first time using the purple. And I can actually add a little mix of purple to the back. It'll mix unevenly, and that uneven distribution is beautiful. Double dip, got some white, got some purple. Add that up here, try to smooth it out as best as I can. I grab some purple without, I accidentally grab purple without adding the white. So I've got my white, 
And I'm going to just sort of exaggerate this little dip right here. See how I'm adding more purple and really exaggerating that dip. And if you wanted to just go back and forth between, you know, first adding blue and then adding purple, that's okay too. Now, I am going to start moving forward now. So I'm going to mostly add the white paint, but I am always going to have a little bit of blue on my brush. And I'm going to keep moving forward, keep moving up here, keep dipping. Always have a lot of white paint on my brush. We want a lot of these brush strokes to start to mix. If you're like me and you happen to get a get to a point where um, you you need to grab some more of your color, then then you can do so. Just, just be careful because these are very very um, dark colors. So I'm just gonna very lightly pick up tiny amount. And again, it is totally okay to lift your brush up. Do some smaller brush strokes. As long as you move from back to forward, back to front, you're good. Do y'all have other questions? So, excuse me. So, mm -hmm. the the darker part is towards the sky, and then the, it gets lighter as you're going towards the water. Um. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. That's a really good observation. Like okay. it's darker in here because it's more indented and it's okay. lighter up here because it's, it's closer to the sky. Thank and you. actually, mm -hmm, and actually here too, it's uh lighter here because it's closer to you, the viewer. Gotcha. Yeah. Very important thing to remember whenever you're trying to uh, um, make things more realistic and put a little more perspective into your other works. So I'm just going to play with these colors and play with these textures and have fun with it. Probably need more white paint. It's so loud in my area. A lot of sirens right now. Well, normally we'd have a kitty cat meowing. I know. I uh, she has not meowed at the door. So Would surprise! You normally, for our newcomers, tell us who we were talking about. So Callie is my my kitty cat. She's the newest member of our family. I basically have a farm <laughs> right here in my home, um, and so she is the kitten that came to us like a year ago or so. And she's very cuddly. She's very friendly. Mm -hmm. And it's like something about like uh, whenever I'm here working specifically <laughs> with paint or like oil pastels, she likes to to come and, and ask to be picked up. Um, <laughs> and so she's, she, well, I say ask, she demands to be picked up. <laughs> it's <laughs> never when I'm just like sitting, doing nothing. It's when I'm working. <laughs> So yeah, that's Callie, and she hasn't really come by. I'm surprised. Yeah, maybe maybe if you come to uh, to other classes, you'll probably see her. Now, just so you guys know, um, I'm gonna add some blue and purple mixture closer to the water's edge now. So down here. So same technique and everything. Double dipping. I'm just gonna add it down here. So I'm just going to follow the water's edge right along here. And I'll probably have to like work it into my other brush strokes here. You can just kind of work with it and play around with it. Um, I think in this one, I I got a little bit of uh, black paint in there because this this wasn't really dry, so that's why it's dark right there. Um, and I think I put a little bit of teal in some spots. You're welcome to do that. You're welcome to add a little bit of black, just a tiny bit though, and it's like, it's it's a really strong color. Um, but 
If you want to, you can add a little teal into there. Again, double dipping very lightly. And if you feel like you're, you can uh, work with it, then you can add a little bit of black paint. So just like the tiniest amount, barely anything right there at the water's edge. You can always add extra white paint on top of something if you feel like you want to um, maybe tame some of those brush strokes and some of those colors. I'm sure you guys have figured that out by now, though. Now, I do want to give you guys plenty of time for the, the main star of the show, the Aurora Borealis. So I am, so we'll probably start this in maybe like a minute or so, two minutes. Once you are finished with the snow, you can rinse your brush. Yeah, so the main star of the show, um, we're gonna be using white, we're gonna be using green and teal and purple. White, green, teal, purple. What did you say that <laughs> teal was a mixture of? Because I don't have any teal. Um, if you have like an aquamarine, like that's that's great too. Oh. Can you use that too? Okay. Yeah, I, know, I know some people's sets come with aquamarine. Um, so yeah, that's very similar. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I have a, a color called Key West. One of my favorite colors, actually. It's like... um. What is it? It's like a really, really light teal, like a light turquoise color. One of my favorites. Now, while you guys are finishing up, I'll start to explain the Aurora Borealis portion. And uh, I don't think I showed you guys, but I actually made a different one, like a different version. And for me, I feel like I like this version a little bit better because I feel like I was able to like organize the colors a little bit better. So you can kind of see the difference. But a little bit crisper lines, nicer lines. Yeah. So whatever you can do, totally fine. What was that? More intense with the yeah, yeah. It's a lot more green, right? <laughs> There's less of that that teal color. Um, yeah, with this one, I actually. I think I mix more white than than what I did with the other one. Is there so, yellow in that one too? No, there's no yellow. It's just uh, white and my light green. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no yellow. Um, but yeah, I have four distinct sections, but that doesn't mean that you have to have four distinct sections too. Um, whatever you're able to create is totally fine. Um, we're going to go one by one mixing a little bit of white with our green first because green is is really the star of the show here um so we're going to start with that and the thing about the northern lights is that it's uh it's brightest in the middle and that's one reason why we want to start with the brightest section uh, with the green and the white it's brightest in the middle and then we'll go, we'll move outward. We'll, um, they, they flare out quite a bit. Um, it gets, it's really, really thin down here at the bottom and they flare out quite a lot from lightest to darkest. So just keep that in mind. Lightest is gonna be your light green and then it's gonna move on to uh, uh, just pure green and then it's gonna move on to teal slash aquamarine and then move on to purple after that. Um, so just keep that idea in mind, lightest to darkest. And then sometimes it might help to just sort of arrange your colors in order. So I've got my green, my teal, and my purple. And of course my white somewhere around here. So just to give you an idea or remind you. Can I ask a question? Which brush yeah. are we using now? Uh, the yes. Else? The same one? Same one. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
just got a list. You got it. Same one. Yeah, well, we're using this a lot. In fact, this is one of my favorite buses. Yes, yeah, so if you come to other classes, you'll find that I use this one quite a lot. I was just about to make that comment. I'll learn. <laughs> Is what yeah. <laughs> and you know what's funny is that these these brightly colored ones um i think they lasted longer than a lot of my my more expensive ones and these are like the cheapest ones i could find so it's just it's insane to me that these bright green ones they last so long and i did rinse my brush by the way rinsed it No, I, I'm, so, so right. Hannah, that isn't yellow in the middle of the aurora. That's the nope. off, that's the aquamarine or the teal first. Uh, it's the green, the green color. So it's it's green and white. Actually, we're gonna mix that first. Okay. So I'll show you that in a minute. We'll mix the green and white, and that's gonna be our lightest color. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at my screen, and it definitely looks like I mixed yellow into it, but I didn't. Okay. Can yeah. you show the other one again real fast? Yeah. This one? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the colors are not as nicely organized hmm. as this one. So, but it still looks really nice. So whatever you're able to do, it's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even think I got the shape exactly right. But, you know, I, I still love the way it turned out, though. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Ghostbusters. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's like it's that <laughs> that same kind of like like really really bright green. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have my green on this side. Let's take a huge scoop of white paint. Big old scoop, maybe even two. We want a good amount, actually, two or three scoops of white paint. And I'm gonna take a good scoop of my green paint now. Now this green paint, it already came to me um, lighter. So I'm gonna mix that in, it's already kind of light. And honestly, I'll probably need some more green. So I'm gonna pour out some of my green. There we go. So again, if you wanna just sort of take your bottles and um, put them in order. It Sometimes it helps to just sort of see them in order. So greens first, then teal, then orange. And just sort of leave them that way as a reminder. Green, then teal, then uh, purple. I said orange instead of purple. Oh my God. <laughs> At least that one's very different. <laughs> okay. Green, teal, purple. <laughs> All right. So I have my nice little mixture here. And we'll start out by drawing a general, um, uh, the, the general road, if you will, of our lights. This is our general pathway. So no matter what, they start pretty, pretty thin, like they're thin, and they all start roughly around the same area. So I'll just sort of start with the easiest one, in my opinion, which is a short one. So if you want to start with the shortest one, you can do that. It just sort of brushes all the way across. So right in the middle, brush it across, just swipe it. And this is just sort of the, the beginnings. It's the, the road. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're just going right over everything that we we spent so much yeah. time blending. I mean, are we sure about this? <laughs> yeah, we got, we got this. <laughs> okay, you got this. Take a deep breath. Don't think about it. Let's do it. And then the next one, um, roughly the same area. Honestly, it doesn't have to start exactly in the same spot. Um, if it helps, sometimes it does help me too. You can point point or just sort of trace the area with your finger. That way you have a general sense of where to go. So swipe it all up. And so you notice we, how, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're working with the green or the, or the white? The, uh, the, the mixture, the green and oh, the white. The green, Thank yeah. You. Mine's 
very different looking. Mine, mine looks different on, on the screen. Yeah. So what I did was I took um, three big old scoops of white paint and then one scoop of green. Okay. My, my green is a lot darker than your green. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Then maybe add some more, uh, more white. Yeah. I've made it very light as I could. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you, to me, you can, it looks yellow. So yes, it looks yellow to it, me too. It does. Right. It does Mine look doesn't yellow. look yellow like hers does. I think it's yeah. something coming Mine through yeah. the camera. What if I changed? Um... Well, in my at least my computer does at night. It it changes the you know for your eye health. Yeah, I have to go and turn it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I changed the setting of my ring line and it doesn't it didn't really help that much. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely no yellow though. <laughs> and you want it, I guess that one's thicker, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And actually it just naturally went that way as I was moving upward and it works out that way because it's, it's going to be thicker anyway. So the next one, next one's a little bit more curvy. So kind of just like that. But honestly, if you are, um, whatever you're able to create is perfect. I want you guys to just create a road, just create a road. And it's naturally going to be um, thicker at the top anyway, because it's supposed to taper. And we will, we will work on that. And if you happen to have space on this side, then you can Go ahead and draw that last little little road right there. The next step is just to go on top of what you have and start to just thicken it up. So I'm going to add more of that very same color, and let's just thicken it up. I'm going to add more of the more of the paint, um, and uh, I'm going to widen it up just a little bit. Like our snow down here. Um, we want to embrace those brush strokes. We want some of them to be just a little bit choppy. Um, I mean, yes, we are smoothing it out, but it's just naturally going to become that way anyway. So we want um, to embrace those brush strokes and just sort of add those colors one at a time. And look at that. See, I accidentally like uh, <laughs> I went off the road a little bit and sort of not messed it up, but like changed it. So I'm gonna just fix it. I'm gonna add a little extra there and I'm good. Now, um, only because I don't want it to get too dry, I'm gonna show you the next step. We're gonna do that double dipping method again. So I have my, the green that I created here. So my light green here, and I'm gonna refill with that. And then I'm going to double dip with my regular straight out of the bottle green. So I have double dip, just regular green. And now I can start to really shape it. So I'm going right at the edge here. And I'm going to start to swipe. It's going to start to make this, this end a little bit thicker and just sort of drag it down a bit more. And honestly, this area is going to end up getting um, a little bit thicker, just naturally. And I would just em embrace it. So again, I want to double dip. Got my made up green and then double dip with my straight out of the bottle green. And I've got, I've got two sides to move on this side. I'm just going right on top of my light green, but also expanding it. Also stretching it. Sometimes it might help to um, just press down a little bit lighter as you get further down, down here especially. Gonna put some on this side as well. Again, I'm trying to embrace those brush strokes. And you don't need to uh, to make these like super straight lines in order to blend them. You can definitely just pick it up and continue on. 
So all I'm doing is going back and forth between grabbing some of my, my pre-mixed light um, green, double dipping with the out of the bottle green. Thickening up this area here, stretching it down. Trying to press down lightly as I get closer to the bottom there. And some of these areas, they they will um, get a little bit bigger than you intended, but that's okay. We can always reshape them with the next color or with the previous color. Keep on going. Now with mine, with this one right here, I, uh, I feel like I, pro actually this one too, I probably, um, not erase. I probably went over a little bit too much of my light green. And you can always add that back. It's all about balance with a lot of these um, paintings. I've lost some of it, but I can go back and add more right in that same area, which is exactly what I'm doing now because I lost some of that really light color. So I'm reapplying it. So you'll just have to take a look at yours and see how you're doing with yours. I'm on the last one. The last one only has it on the, the, the top side, just like that first one. There we go. Now, whenever I do move on to, to teal or aquamarine in some cases, I'm not gonna rinse my brush. I mean, if I if you guys have like a ton of paint like I do, you can always, uh, you can wipe it on your napkin, but um, I wouldn't rinse it though. Um, rinsing your brush, sometimes depending on the brand of paint you're using, Sometimes when you rinse that brush, it ends up um, taking off some of the paint that you just applied. So that's 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 honestly a good a big reason why I don't really rinse too much. So I'm just gonna wipe it off a little bit because I have a ton of that light color there. At any point, you can double dip into your teal. So your next color and continue that same pattern. If you feel like you accidentally got rid of um, too much of a certain color, then you can always go back, backtrack a little bit, like me, for example. I added a lot of teal. So there's like a, there's a really um, a stark line right here. So I can backtrack a little bit and I can add my green. And that's how you blend it out. And in turn, I actually, and I actually love this green. It made like a different kind of green, like a darker, brighter green. And I love that color. I must have done something wrong because I'm not getting any of like the yellow. Um, I think it has more to do with the the color of, of my my green specifically. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's all me. Because my my screen is making it look different, is making it more uh, bright. I like the yellow. <laughs> I like yeah, you can add that if you want. I'm totally free to. I may have to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you like it, sure. Go for it. I'm trying to see who, who was talking. Was that you, Jeanette? Who was that? Yes. Um, I thought I recognized your voice. Love it. My my yeah. friend who was going to come, she did not show. I was just like, okay, uh -huh. veteran. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Maybe she got busy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she can watch the recording. All right.
No. You'll probably have to, you'll probably end up like backtracking quite a bit. And in fact, I, I, I definitely did that with this one. Definitely backtrack quite a lot. So I'm moving back to that green. Hannah. Yeah. So I, I've got one color. The second color, was it the same teal we put down below or no? Yeah, it was the same teal. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All right. Like the, the one in the water, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same one. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, I think you guys are going to be like double dipping pros after this. I just realized what time it is, and now I know why Callie isn't meowing. She just got fed. That's why. Mm -hmm. I bought a uh, an automatic cat feeder, and uh, I'm trying to get them used to it, and I think they are really quickly getting used to it. They They bother me now. So the cats will come up to me in the middle of the day because they know I can push the button to release the food at any time. Mm. So they've started to like come up to me and uh, beg me to go and push the button for them. It's cute and I'll, I'll do it, but I know I'm not supposed to. <sighs> so. They are your your overlords you know yeah i know they are my um my black cat cora she's actually the one who came up to me today i was sitting here uh minding my own business and then she doesn't normally come up to me that's the thing she doesn't normally like walk up to me but she just like started to like tap on me like like kind of like scrape on my on my uh, leg just a little bit and um but she wouldn't stop like I'd pet her and she'd get really annoyed at me <laughs> but then she finally like walked and like led me over to her her food bowl oh, that's funny. <laughs> like she actually like I could see her like looking back at me just to see if I was walking yep, yep. getting you trained <laughs> yeah that's what that is she's training me oh yep. for sure <laughs> yeah I feel like I feel like they've got me trained pretty well. I heard that you're starving them, so you know. I know. <laughs> Cats are such liars. Portion, oh you know, yeah, portion out their food. Tough life. See how I'm like going back and forth and trying to balance these colors out. Because, like, a, I'll go to, to put in one color, but then I accidentally put too much in a different section. Um, and that's okay. It's, it's all about a balance. It's all about, like, going back and forth just to see how you can balance it. And, again, we're, we're going for that painterly feel, that painterly look. We want to see our brush strokes. Now I've just added um, the teal. And so for me, I don't know where you guys are at, but for <laughs> me, I'll have to add the, the purple. And I told you, I go, I go fast. Um, again, if you happen to have a lot of green on your brush, like I do, I've got a ton of green, um, then, then try to like wipe your brush pretty well get a lot of this color off because the green plus purple um if there's too much green it might make brown but if there's a little bit it's totally fine like this is fine just wipe it really well i still want to stay away from that water though i don't want it to i don't want it to, to lift the paint off so um i think i i'm trying to figure out what i did i think i actually grabbed my my teal first grab the teal first see i'm loading it up with teal and then go into your purple after that so i'm double dipping teal first and then purple
same idea. Go over those brush strokes again and again. Kind of blend it out. How many greens are there? There's the yellow, the green, the, um, yellow, the green, and then teal. Is that it? The yellow, green, and um, teal? Or there's, there's another green? There's actually no, there's only one green, actually. So oh, it's you light seeing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry, Karen. There is a, a light green. It's a really light green here. Yeah. And then a slightly darker green, but it's still a light green. Right. But I'd say and like. The teal. And then the teal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then the teal, you got it. Now I am definitely having to balance the teal and the purple, adding more teal to it than I intended because that purple is pretty strong. And that's okay because, again, it's about that balance. I think in about um, two minutes or so, I'll show you guys how to do the trees. Oh, I'm way behind. <laughs> okay, sorry. I know, I think that prednisone's working on you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, What's I recently, I guess her? I, <laughs> I know, I recently got my, my MS infusion. I get it once every like six months. And, uh, the, the the prednisone like it um fuels me up i should say i don't let them give me that you do ocrevus right yeah 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 i say no to prednisone mm -mm. I, I didn't know i had a choice i had no idea oh, yeah there's right. lots of I, others or i just say no i don't do any of the steroids as long as you can yeah I, i've worked it out that's kind of cool okay yeah they they never I have adrenal insufficiency on top, so I have to take steroids every day. So I have to ah. balance it all. But yes, yeah. I know all yeah. the differences between the steroids. Yeah, man. I don't you, like them. If you refuse your steroids, can you tell? I can't live. <laughs> huh? I can't live if I refuse it. Mm, because right, but can you know, tell I, when my you body can... doesn't make it. Okay. My body doesn't make yeah. it. Horrible. Gotcha. But do you mean with medicine or with the adrenal thing? The adrenal issue causes. Yeah, no, I mean, I, whoever yeah. was asking about, oh, do you mean refusing for the the medicine infusion? The steroids before the ogrevus. Yeah, I did it the first time and hated it. That was 2017. And after that, I was just like, I'm not doing that anymore. And they mm -hmm. don't like it. And for a while they fought and I got it. And then I just, I... As long, I mean, I had a breathing issue once, so we watch me and I go a little slower, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so it usually takes me about seven hours to do the thing, but I feel way better when I'm done. No, no prednisone. I just do the Pepsid and, uh, Benadryl and Tylenol. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Cause I can't sleep for a good solid week. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. So I just say no, as long as, I mean, it's really just to make sure that you don't have breathing problems. So I just go slower. Mm. And painting class is harder when Hannah takes prednisone. <laughs> Zoom it on. Yep. Zoom, Zoom it in. Yep. Going <laughs> fast. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> so speaking of which, mm -hmm. I am going to show you guys how to having a heart uh, attack. My heart. I'm having heart palpitations. <laughs> you got this, Karen. You got this. Mostly because I know you, you East Coasters, are getting pretty late over there too. So I do want to give you guys uh, time to do the trees. Um, so even if you're still working on the Aurora Borealis, that is okay. Um, the trees, I feel like, are um, it's a lot of the same thing again and again. Um, so I'll show you guys how to create those trees. Um, and this is where your smaller round brush is going to come into play. So you can choose to use like the 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 size six or the size four, something like that. 
um, even down to a size two if you want like the really tiny trees down here. But you you definitely are able to do it all with the, the size six brush though. Um, at least you, sh you most people, not everyone. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab my black paint and I really wanna work it in there because I want a lot of it. And I love that I've just been, I've been drawing or painting a lot of trees this season. They're just so fun. I love doing them. I'm going to start off in the middle. So notice how um, my tallest trees are on the sides here. You don't have to abide by that rule if you don't want to. Um, you could really have them scattered, you know, have it, um, uh, I don't know, short and on, on this side or tall, whatever you want to do. I am going to start off with the tall ones because personally, I feel like it's a little bit easier to, to do it that way. And no matter what, you want to start in the middle with the stem. And it's okay if it's a thicker line. That's totally fine. I'm going to try not to make it too thick, though. So nice stem there. And I'm going to start to tap them, but also kind of swipe them, too. It's a little bit of both. And some of your trees, you might end up um, making them a little bit taller just because they they maybe they don't look too, too right. But it's a little bit of a tap, a little bit of a swipe. The stem in the middle um, should mostly be covered up by the time you, you reach the bottom. It's going to taper down, get thicker as you move downward. It's, excuse me, was, were we using mm -hmm. total black? Yeah, yeah, pure black. You got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, something I forgot to mention, that's all me. I actually put a, a bed of black paint across the top first. So, I mean, you can do it at any point, honestly. You don't have to do it first, but it might be easier to do it first. It's, it's mostly an outline to sort of protect your, um, your snow down here. So I'm just gonna do a line of black paint. And again, it's just to protect the snow, give it like a little, a little cushion between the trees and the snow. It also helps to um, sort of cover up this area right here, especially if it's a little bit vague. It's like it's just some random little beams of light sticking up and you don't know where they're coming from. Well, you can just cover it up with a black line. Once When you do the trees, the trees will be able to help you to um, uh, make it sink back into the background. So again, starting all over again with the tree, I'm going to go ahead and make a line. Feel free to move, uh, feel free to use any of your smaller brushes if you feel like you need to. I'm going to refill often. I'm going to start a little bit lower than the top here, just because I feel like it's it's nice to sort of warm warm up my hands and sort of get to the groove of making this, this shape where I'm tapping, but I'm also kind of swiping just a little bit. Tapping, but also swiping. I actually wanna zoom in so you guys can see that. Oh, I lost my painting, this stupid program. You lost it. Did it not save? Well, some of it saved, but it's like, what did I do? No. In case anyone's wondering, Karen uses a um, a tablet and a, an app to make her, her paintings. Okay. 
So again, I'll do the next one. And I'll just do a few more. Um, I think that these trees, um, they probably will take a little bit of time, more time than what we have. So I encourage you guys to work on it a little bit more at your own pace. So with that being said, I'll probably do maybe like one or two more trees and then we can open the floor. And um, if anybody wants to share, we would love to see it. So the, the trees, um, they do get pretty small down here, but again, you don't have to make them small. In fact, I'm just going to make a big tree because I can. <laughs> kind of tapping and kind of swiping. Little taps, little swipes. I love being able to see the the lights um, behind my brush strokes. I think that that's like, it's so pretty. I love seeing that. And then I'll do one on this side so y'all can see that. Maybe this one will be a really tall tree. And actually in the original picture, um, when I did this part, the Aurora Borealis was not completely dry. So some of my trees are kind of grayish, a little grayish. Um, and if that happens to you, that's okay. You can leave it as is, or you can just wait for later, wait for it to dry, and then you can add um, the, the trees. So I'm gonna start over here, do a few tap, tap, taps, and then swipes, swipes that go back and forth. Definitely want to cover up the middle area as much as I can, cover up some of that tree trunk. You know, I saw um, a, a photo on mm -hmm. like next door, or whatever, you know, of in Oakland. And it looked like that. And I'm like, oh my God, it looks like Hans oh. painting. Really? <laughs> yeah. oh. I do like that with those trees. Cause I think once before I tried doing the trees, but I mean, it's funny, you know, life imitating wow. art. Yeah, that's interesting. That's kind of cool. What number of brush are you using for your tree? This one is a five. So either you can use a four or a five or a six. But yeah, this one's a five. All right. So one more, I promise. And then we'll open the floor. And if you guys want to show off your work, we would love to see it. And actually, another little idea is you can also go along the black line that you made and do some little taps right there. And it just gives the illusion of like shrubbery or some other kind of foliage in the background there. Sort of tapping and making some texture. The illusion of foliage so that's just an idea all right who here would like to show us your work we would love to see it even if you're not completely finished if you have to like get off because i know it's it's kind of late mm -hmm. in some areas so feel free never to done this before, mine. just shout out and we will find you i'm coming jp yeah my, oh my goodness. Let me see. See if you can find the UFO. Oh, oh I found the UFO. UFO. Oh, there it is. That's hilarious. I love the fact that you put your trees actually like in the snow. That's really nice. That's great. Uh, and the rocks in, ah. in the water. I love that that detail. Cool. Great yeah. top, I love it. <laughs> 
Right. Thank you very but much. Of course, the UFO. It always is. Hannah, is. Alexis, we love yes. you guys. Of course. We so love you, too. <laughs> hey, Joe, we're coming. Appreciate you. you. Oh, Joe, that's so beautiful. I love your yeah, water. Look at yeah, I'm looking at the, the texture in the water and the texture in the snow. I think that's my favorite. The texture in the snow is really pretty. It is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, you did a great, great job, job, Joe. Joe. Yeah, Anybody oh, else would like to share? Oh, we yeah. have the Chen household. Let's see. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Look at that. I know. It It looks like it's glowing. It does. It looks like it's alive. Yeah. There's like oh, a huge glow cool. there. I love that. Yes. Oh, my goodness. The, the snow. I'm loving the, the purple in the snow. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. Look at that. That texture up here in the sky. That's so pretty. Oh, my gosh. You guys did fantastic. Yeah. I know. I love the the oh, shape no. of your your water area too. It's so nice. I'm blurred. I know. I don't know how to blur. Thank you guys so much. Okay, yeah. Marcy, you're up. Oh, ooh, Marcy. Hello. You know, like, nice. That's some color. You know. Your your water is gorgeous. I'm I know. I love the texture. little texture. Yes. Yeah. And I'm loving the the subtle change um, in uh, in color in your snow. Um, it's it's hard to do that. You did a really good job. Thank you. I have to brighten up my aurora borealis. The purple is a little too light. I I'm gonna try and add blue and red and make a brighter purple. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Do some color mixing. Yeah. yeah. Great job, Marcy. And then thank Sharon, you. I'm coming. Yeah, to thank you. Ooh, oh my God! Up there, Hi. I love like the the shape that it's making, like or not the shape, the direction that it's going. Yes, the direction. I have some more trees to do, but ah, down there, yeah, the trees that you that you did are really <laughs> nice too, over on the side there. Yeah, yeah that's gonna be a gorgeous forest. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming to you. You know yeah. I'm a slowpoke, right? There we go, Marion. Oh, that's pretty. So I know. Look at the. the I love the, the different direction the, you took. Yeah, the that's what I meant to say. The direction. I love that it's all facing upward. It's a, mm -hmm. like you're. We have you have a different view. Yeah. Yes. I was I was lucky to work up north one went uh, one fall and I did see the, the northern lights and it was amazing. Oh. But um pictures don't do it justice because they're really moving. Mm -hmm. They're dancing in the sky. Oh. So it's like <laughs> I wish I could capture the movement, but <laughs> I tried. No, yeah. you did great. Thank you, Barry. Great job. And then yeah. Laurel, I'm coming to you. Oh, there you oh are, look Laurel. at the texture. Mm -hmm. I know the texture in in the sky that is so cool, wow. and I'm loving the the texture in the snow too. Right, like taking footsteps. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, like footsteps. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, I'm just oh, I'm loving gorgeous. the way the purple layers. It's beautiful. Thanks. And then mm. we have thank you, Laurel. And then we have Party yeah, Monster. thank you. Oh my gosh, Party look at Monster, that. Love it. Look at your tree. Nice. I know the uh, is that purple? I like your water. Side? Did you lighten it? Because it it's really pretty. I'm not sure what I did. <laughs> I definitely party. Is that, you that if you're a party, party monster, that's all that matters, right? Get that right. Get that right. <laughs> I was confused because it looks like the work of party monster. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love like the, the subtle the changing colors. Like Great job, cool. as Thanks, always. Buddy. And then Mary, I'm, you're I'm, up. This is a very first ever, and I have I haven't gotten it done. I haven't gotten purple in, oh. so I'm just playing catch up the whole way. It's beautiful and though, it's especially fantastic. since it's, it's your, your first. I'm going to hear this. that right. It's hard. Some of the darks are really dark. <laughs> it's maybe is there a way of lightening some of that, or am uh, I just a layoff? <laughs> In the background, you mean? Is that, is yes. that what you meant? 
yeah i i would i would kind of leave it but it's beautiful like the the transition of color is really nice though the gradient i should say i'm gonna try and finish up with what i did catch up on yeah and yeah no it's no and your water is so lifelike Mm -hmm. That is definitely does not seem like a first painting. But you I've never ever done anything. Like you should be so proud of yourself. Yeah, it does not seem like a first time no, painting. No, because Hannah, there's beautiful. so much life in that snow. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, I'm trying, but it helped to get the the uh, supplies because I had yeah. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you did so a it's great a first. job. It's been very enjoyable. <laughs> I've just been trying to keep up. No, you did. You did one. And not alone. alone. Everybody <laughs> have a good holiday. Good night, party monster. Thank Don't you. forget to fill out the the post survey. That would be amazing if you could. Okay, um, and I would... then we'll have Anna Marie. There we go. And I see all of y'all. I'm coming. Trust me. Oh my gosh, is that pink or is it it's just a pink. light purple? Oh, that's so pretty. Kind of like a mint. It's not really oh. blend that much. It's the, it's like very um stark. The trans. I don't have a good transition. Mm. Mm. I love the the color combo. I wonder if you could go over it with um. I wonder, like a blue, maybe like if you have blue, or if you happen to have teal, like just put it right on that on that line where they where they they meet. And I think it'll do it'll do really good. On the outside uh yeah yeah well any anywhere where you want it to blend because i feel like um uh the blue will help to blend it to either way either between okay. the purple and the green or the the purple and the the sky okay all right i'll try that thank, thank you, you yeah. Anne Marie. Yeah. and marie i'm coming to you Ooh, oh fred look at that Hi. that I it love... looks like it's glowing it really it looks does. like it's glowing to me yeah, like, like, I love I love the center there, like that that middle area there. Um, just the way you handle the brush strokes is really nice. And your trees, all the different sizes and shape, and just the perspective of it, you yeah, fantastic. Looks good, Fred. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. good. It looks. Yeah. I love the um, the little <laughs> the little tree that's right there in the middle. I love that guy. Yes. <laughs> that's a great treat like thank it. you fred yep thank you and then elijah here we go there we go elijah oh my gosh yeah look at that the um that purple i love the way you handled the purple yes. and the way you handled the the snow too and also the sky gradients fantastic mm -hmm. yeah the gradient in the sky it's it's very subtle it's really good fantastic thank you elijah Thank you. And then Laura, I'm coming. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look, Look at, at that. Yeah. Man, it looks like there's a lot of uh a lot of space between like the foreground and the background. Like you you really pushed it back. Like it's it's got a lot of perspective. I it has that. a lot of perspective. Yeah. Great yeah, job. seriously. It oh, really man, I just want to live in these. I, I want to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Laura. And then Jamie, I'm coming. Ooh. There you go, Jamie. Oh. I love that. It's a work in progress, but yeah. The oh the God. water, the surface of the water is so nice. That texture that you put there. I'm loving that texture. And I'm loving the the texture in the Aurora Borealis too. Oh yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh my gosh, yeah. so pretty! And the, your trees are turning out so good. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna add more of them? Yeah, it looks like it's like super dark, but I want to finish like up here first. Yeah, gotcha. for sure. Yeah. What I yeah. Great job. Love it. Thank you, Jamie. Thank, thank you. you. I see. And then Dennis and Tihani, do you want to share yours? Sure. Mm, yes. We're first timers oh, too. Oh, yeah. of course. Love it. Here, let me mm -hmm. put you up there. Ooh, there you oh, go. Yeah. That's glowing. That mm. I feel like like the it trees looks are like cool. It's a glow in the dark. Oh my gosh, seriously. It. It's really nice. <laughs> 
And that's uh, this Dennis. is my yes. Dennis. Oh my gosh! Work in progress. You. Thank you, Fred, for the invite. Yeah, beautiful. Great oh God, job, you guys. Just gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <sighs> no, and just it glows. Oh my gosh! So I know. beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, and Marion, I'm coming. Mm -hmm. There you are. Oh my gosh, look at your water. The, I know <laughs> that texture of the water. Um, I love that. That's really pretty. And your trees are turning out really nice too. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna work on it more. <laughs> yeah, Beautiful. yeah, for sure. And your sky. Thank you. So pretty. Yeah, great job. Mm -hmm. Great, great job. Did this was any... a great class, like once again. Thanks, Marion. <laughs> Did anybody else want to share? Um, oh, not a requirement. Yeah. But... yeah. Okay. Oh, you hi, see? Victoria. I see oh. you. Oh, there you go. Oh, Victoria, Whoa. and then and then uh, Mary will get will get back to you. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh! Victoria. Look at that. There's so much going on. There is. Seriously, you are so good at this. <laughs> Oh my your, gosh! I, I love your tree. Your your tree that's like right there in the front. Ooh. I think that's my favorite. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. The perspective that you had on this and you made it your own. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful, Victoria. Yes, you guys are awesome. I love it, Jamie. I saw you have to sign off. Yes. Thanks for coming, Jamie. And then uh, Maria. Is that you, mm -hmm. iPad? Yeah, yeah. Yep. iPad. Okay. I'm coming. Um, okay, here, here we go. There we go. There we go. I love that. Your trees turned out so nice. They did. So I love that they're they're overlapping the the snow just a little bit, like just enough that it gives it a lot of depth. Yes. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, the water. Honestly, yeah, I love like the water's edge there, like right where the water meets the snow. There's something about like the way you blended it in. Yeah, it almost feels like the snow's alive. Yeah, yeah. It was it's fun as usual. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. And then Rachel, there you are. There oh, we go. Oh my gosh those transitions between your your colors right there um they're so subtle they're like that's what I was hoping to achieve on mine <laughs> it's really good you did a great job with and it and where you placed them is so cool yeah it's like and it's a really dance. dark dining room so I don't know if uh, I've had to use my camera <laughs> camera's like <laughs> really dark in here Hey, you did a great job, though. You really did. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Thank you, Rachel. And Natalie, you, I see you have yours up. Do you want to share? I'm not finished. but Oh, that's okay. If you want to share, we want to show it. I've got, I've got three pictures because i got three people with me. But this is mine. You know I'm always the last one, right? <laughs> oh, no. I got you beat. It's a work in progress. So. Oh, my gosh. Look at that I'm, water. I'm, yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm still working on mine. I'm I'm always the last one, and I had to use a bigger canvas because I had you sent me some pictures of the little ones. But anyway, this is mine. Great and job, my daughter. You, uh, I love the way you did that background though, like that very first step that we did. Okay. Yeah, the gradient between yeah, the, the gradient dark and the light. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, and this it's is my really great. Yeah, oh. let's let's see. Ooh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I love that's the water. That's really, there's something about like the your maybe your placement of the trees and maybe like the way you did the the snow uh, back yeah. here. It gives it a lot of depth. I love that. That's her. Yeah. Hi hey, there. good to meet you. Great job. <laughs> yes. Yeah, seriously. Oh, laughing. one more. Oh my yes. gosh. Oh, look at the way. So it's cool. That. I know. It's like it's all colored with the purple right in the middle there. That's a really oh, nice combo. That is so oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. And the and the, the reflections. The reflection. 
that's creative. Jenna, that's we have beautiful. the best students. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Thank you guys. And Laura, um, I'm coming back to you. There we go, Laura. Yeah, my niece oh, is man. here with oh, me. Man. Oh, that's so I love to her, but uh, she asked me to show it. Oh, yeah, wow, thank it, you. It is beautiful. It's so beautiful. Great the job. Yeah, the texture on the Aurora. I love the way that looks. She's been calling it a sea creature. That's <laughs> like it looks like. I love it. It's so creative. <laughs> thank oh, you. Thank you. Did anybody else want to share? If you don't, you do not ever have to, but we want to give you the opportunity if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. I would like. Okay, go ahead. That? Okay, we're coming. There you are. Oh my Whoa. gosh. Oh, man. Oh, man. Look at That's that. That's how it's supposed to look. But you know <laughs> I love that. Yes. But I, I, I understand what I did wrong now. I should have put the yellow more closer because I looked at Fred's and, and, and everyone, it's the green that's on the outside that gives it that gaseous look. So I'm going to, I'm going to redo green. it. I'm going to huh. do it light green on the inside and that way the oh. outer more gaseous yeah yeah it's it, like that idea where it goes from from lightest to, yeah. to dark is that what you mean yes. yeah then it'll be but, it, 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 this doesn't quite do it but I, now I understand what I need to do I still love the movement that I'm seeing like the way that you put your brush strokes in there and the fact yes. that I can actually see um the direction of of the gases um okay. i love that part oh, thank you Great I'm finish. Uh, i like the you. stars the starlit yeah. night the stars yeah. are such a cute addition uh, yeah the stars are a good idea there's, there's a there's a a, a, a on, online explore.org and they have live uh live uh cams on aurora borealis in Alaska and in Manitoba, Canada. Wow. So, okay. so depending on where you are, if you go on, if you go on, um, you have to wait till it gets dark there. And and it doesn't always come. So when you know that the ring of the Aurora is active, go on explore.org, Aurora Borealis, and and you will see it happening. And, Thank you, and they, Jeanette. And you see the stars too. That's <laughs> That's really cool. Thanks so much for sharing. Great job, Andrea. Thanks. I'm not finished. I haven't even gotten to um, the trees yet. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's turning out great. I nice. love the the bottom, like the water down there. I feel like it has a lot of depth. Like it looks like it's really yes. pushed back into the back. I like the guy that put the trees on the snow. I think I might do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Was there anybody else who wanted to share? And hello, Callie here. We'll show Callie I'm real trying. quick. She's really hungry. I don't think she actually ate. <laughs> Was there anybody else? Like, if not, well, Karen's you. not happy, but she'll show it anyway. Okay, Karen. Ms. Karen. There's only one thing I really like about it. Let's see if you figure that out. Ooh, okay. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, so Karen uses her tablet. Oh, oh, man, I lost it. There. There we go. That oh, nice. yeah. Ooh, there we go. You got it nice. really fast. Nice. Yeah. Um, is it the water that you And like? I came 20 minutes late, so. Yeah. You caught up really fast. Um, you know what I like? I'm going to. Okay, you're uh -huh. going to guess. The water? Is it the water? Uh-uh. No, it's the water. The aurora. You know the light that is like a, a, a horizontal light in the middle of the aurora coming across? Oh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. no. Don't take that out. That's not. Yeah. No, that, that looks like an aurora. That's so yeah, pretty. How it did it. You know, I was just not happy with the colors and whoops, I just kept doing stuff and I'm like, well, that's cool. Oh, yeah, right? that is really right? cool. Yeah, yeah, please keep that. Don't take yeah, that. No, that I, don't I, don't so much I don't even know how it happened. 
and it looks <laughs> like part of what an actual aurora borealis looks like yeah it's a, so translucent it's a, yeah faint glow in the sky like in the background it's so pretty man yeah 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 thanks for, sh hi, for sharing guys oh Callie, you have a little baby hi Callie. um i would love to show you guys off on social media if you're okay with it um you're more than welcome to email me back um just a picture of your painting when, whenever it's finished um I would love to to share it to social media or you can um, tag us too you can do both yeah oh yeah I can tag us too that too um so just email me back your picture if you want to um and then again don't forget to do that post survey we would love to see your opinions um is there anything else you want to say Alexa yes guys uh we actually have another art class next week <laughs> So yes. if you did not have enough fun tonight and you want to keep the party going, come back and see us next week. Feel free to invite all of your friends, all of your family. Um, we are more than happy to accommodate whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have family and for the holidays, just gather around, come with us, hang out. And mm -hmm. we are doing something super fun. And it's also something kids would enjoy too. Do you, Hannah, do you have any examples? <laughs> I do actually. It's right here. You guys are getting um, the exclusive scoop. Yeah, so I haven't yet sent out the um, uh, the flyer yet, but you guys will get that in your thank you email. Choose oh, your character. Oh, oh that's cool. Yes. <laughs> so you actually draw them in a very similar way <laughs> um, with with slight modifications afterwards. So I'll, I'll walk you through the whole process of how to begin but then how to modify it and move on from there to your, your own different one. So yeah, I'm excited. For and it. yes, um, we will be sending that out in the, the follow up because mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll be sending the recording and everything. So feel free to sign up. We would love to have you again. And again, tell all your family and friends, uh, that's what we're here for. And does anyone have a dog like up? Uh, Cause we ended on a dog last time. So I would, I'd be so thrilled <laughs> if we had another dog to, and on Just Laurel, I think Laurel are you going to see okay JP's got the dog okay so... oh. Oh. Okay. okay so we are oh, going to end on doggos and we would like all of you to have oh, oh my gosh Natalie's so got a dog cute. too okay hey, Laura I see your dog Laura too they're so cute so we want to end on a very love positive love note with doggies, oh. and we hope that you have a fantastic evening. And please come back and see and us. And thank next you to week. our sponsors, and for Alex. Yes. yes. And, oh yes. And, oh, yes. Uh, thank you guys so much. See you next week. Good night, so everybody. Fun.